Welcome to this series on how math is used in construction. This lesson will deal with concrete. We'll look specifically at estimating the amount of concrete to order. This does not deal with um, reinforcing steel, uh, extra costs. This is strictly just ordering the concrete. And this isn't a how-to on how to pour concrete. This is just how math is used when you are doing a project like this. So first of all, um, we want to understand the importance of estimating. Concrete is not cheap, and so we don't want to order extra because that's just a waste. There's nothing really you can do with it. And we don't want to run short because that can run into very expensive problems. Um, if you have all your trucks lined up and you are a yard short, you can have a serious problem on your hands. The concrete starts hardening, they have to order more trucks, maybe the trucks are already scheduled and busy, and you can run into some serious problems. So we don't want to run short. Let's begin by looking at how concrete is ordered. One cubic yard, often just called a yard, can be visualized this way. Just a cube that would be one yard by one yard by one yard. This would also be three feet by three feet by three feet because one yard is three feet and three times three times three is 27. So one yard, or just a yard, is the same as 27 cubic feet. Now, one thing to make sure, generally when you're talking to a concrete company, they'll just call it a yard, but it is a cubic yard, not a literal yard, which is three feet. So we're talking in three dimensions, we're talking volume, but concrete companies are just used to talking about a yard, not typically a cubic yard. So let's look at an example. Here's slab on grade. This just means it is a simple concrete slab and it's being poured directly on a properly prepared surface, generally packed gravel, sand, you know, so you have good drainage and everything's very hard so it won't settle over time. This one is 30 by 40 feet and 6 inches thick. The calculation here is quite simple. We just calculate volume of a rectangular prism, which is length times width times depth. So 30 feet times 40 feet times half a foot, 6 inches is half a foot, that gives us 600 cubic feet. Now we need to convert that to yards so we can order. Remember that 27 cubic feet is the same as 1 cubic yard. So we can use cross divide and multiply to look at proportional ratios. So we keep our cubic feet on the top, our cubic yards on the bottom, and we want to know how many cubic yards to order. So we always start above or below the value we don't know. In this case, we start with the 600. 600 times 1 is 600. Divided by 27 is 22.2. And that goes in our answer, 22.2 cubic yards or yards. Now we always want to make sure that we have a little bit extra. Things go wrong, there's spillage, things aren't calculated quite right, accidents happen, uh, we don't want to run short. Different companies will suggest different uh, percentages to order extra. Generally, it's between 3 and 5%. Some of this depends on the type of pour. Some types of pours tend to have less um, error than others. It also depends on your experience uh, as a contractor doing this kind of work. As you gain more experience, you'll get more accurate with your use generally. But a standard reference is 5%. So if we take 22.2, times 1.05, which is the same as 105% or 100% plus the extra 5% for overage, then we get 23 and a quarter yards. So that's what we could order from the company. Next, I want to look at doing a full basement. This is going to be a multi-part uh, project. These start with footings. So these footings are going to be 37 by 25 on the outside. So if we take 37 times 25, we get 925 square feet. That's if we covered the whole thing with concrete, but we're not going to do that. We have the center part doesn't have concrete on it. So the center part is 33 by 21, so we can calculate that to 693 square feet. If we subtract those, we get 925 minus 693 gives us 232 square feet, which is the area, the surface area on the ground, that the footings will cover. 
Now the footings are 18 inches deep, so if we multiply our 232 by 1.5, 18 inches is the same as a foot and a half, we get 348 cubic feet now. Now we need to convert from cubic feet to yards, which just means dividing by 27. So 348 divided by 27 is 12.8 yards. And now we are going to uh, calculate in any overage for our safety margin. So multiply by 1.05 and we get 13 and a half yards. So we're going to order 13 and a half yards for our footings. Next we're going to want to put up walls. This is a basement, so we're going to put concrete walls all around. If this was a daylight basement, we might want to calculate in window openings, door openings, things like that, where uh, we wouldn't be using concrete in those, obviously. But this is just a standard basement for solid concrete walls. So these are going to be 36 by 24 on the outside dimensions. So 36 times 24 is 864 square feet. Now we're going to subtract the inside part, which is 34 by 22. These walls are one foot thick. So if we look at our 36 foot dimension, minus a foot on each side, we're going to get 34 feet. Our 24 foot minus a foot on each side gives us 22 feet. We can calculate that to be an area of 748 square feet. And 864 minus 748 gives us 116 square feet of surface area that's going to be underneath the actual wall. The wall is 10 feet high, so then I'm going to multiply that by 10 and I get 1160 cubic feet of concrete. 1160 cubic feet of concrete divided by 27 cubic feet per cubic yard gives us 43 yards of concrete. We're going to calculate our safety margin in there, which is going to give us 45 yards. Next, we're going to pour a slab floor in the middle. So this is going to match the inside dimensions of the walls because the concrete is going to go right up against the wall. So 22 times 34 gives us 748 square feet. We're going to have a depth of 4 inches, so we're going to multiply that by 4 divided by 12, 4 over 12. So a couple ways to do this. We could do 748 times 4 divided by 12 gives us 249.3 cubic feet. Or we could do 748 divided by 3, because 4 inches is one third of a foot. We can just do 748 divided by 3 gives us 249.3. We're going to divide by 27 to convert to yards. That gives us 9.3 yards. We're going to add our safety margin of 5%. Gives us 9 and 3 quarter yards. So now we've looked at all three pores. We have our footings, we have our walls, we have our floor. Let's look at estimating the cost based on a couple scenarios. Our total volume is 13.5 plus 45 plus 9.75 or 68.25 yards. We're going to compare two companies here. Company 1 charges $105 per yard. Each truck holds 9 yards. Company 2 only charges $100 per yard, but they have a $50 charge on loads that are less than 5 yards. This is very standard in concrete companies because it's expensive for them to take small loads. Again, each truck holds 9 yards. So let's look at the footings. 13.5 yards of concrete times $105 per yard gives us $1,417.50. For company two, we're going to have to have one truckload of nine yards times $100 per yard, which gives us $900. Then we're going to have a short load, 4.5 yards times $100, plus the $50 surcharge, which is going to be $500. Now we're going to look at the walls. 45 yards times $105 per yard gives us $4,725 for company one. So 45 yards works very nicely on trucks that each hold nine yards because that's just five truck loads. Uh, 45 yards times $100 per yard gives us $4,500. No overage fees, which is nice. And that's our walls. 
Now we're going to look at the slab floor. So for company one, 9.75 times 105 gives us 1,023.75. And for company two, we're going to have nine yards at $100 per yard is $900. So this load is also gonna have a 0.75, another short load. So 0.75 times 100 plus the $50 surcharge brings us to $125. When we add these up for company one, they come to 7,166.25, and for company two, to 6,925, even. So even with the extra surcharges, in this case, company two is slightly cheaper. So I hope you learned lots on this. Um, if you need to go back and review some of this, that's fine. Um, we're basically just finding volume of rectangular prisms so you can use your understanding of 3D volume to calculate whatever shapes you need. Just remember to then divide by 27 to calculate the yards, to add some extra, generally 3 to 5%, and then you can multiply by your cost per yard and any overage charges you have or whatever, depending on the company you're dealing with. Thank you very much.